Hey everyone, welcome to day 12 of analysing uh, one of my classical games. Um, I wanted to try and make these uh, videos a little bit shorter. I've noticed on some of my other videos that they've uh, gone on for sort of quite a long time, sort of 25, 30 minutes, and uh, I'll try and reduce this one down to at least 10 minutes so uh, you're not getting uh, deaf by video, so to speak. Um, and uh, I just wanted to show you more kind of a crucial point in this game. Uh, the opening in the middle game really wasn't much worth talking about, really, as uh, not really a whole lot happened. There was just a lot of swaps. And uh, I'll be honest with you, the, I kind of slightly butchered the opening a little bit. But um, this was the ending we reached. It was a very interesting ending. Um, I'm winning, but it's not plain sailing. Um, you'll see here that uh, White has got this central pawn duo that can be a threat any minute. Um, he's got this potential passer here as well uh, coming down. Um, but, and also another problem in my position is my king has an exposed back crank. So at some point I'm going to need to get my king to safety. And, uh, this, this is a, this is quite a useful tempo gaining move for, for white, um, uh, to kind of save his position as you'll find here. Um, so with rook end games, they are very, they're quite difficult, you know, and the most important thing to really, I guess the biggest rule of thumb with rook endings is to um, make sure that your pieces are more active than their pieces. Um, activity is probably the most important thing in, in rook endings. And, um, you know, if you've got a rook that's attacking something like this one is versus one that's uh, defending something, uh, then you're usually doing okay. Um, but as I say, they're very difficult. They do require a lot of calculating, uh, a lot of uh, thought process into every single move that you do. And you'll see here that this particular rook ending, it was pretty sloppy from both of us. It went back and forth uh, throughout. Um, so in any case, um, one of the advantages I didn't mention actually is also the white has got these uh, horrible isolated pawns and uh, in this particular end game, this is really good for me, uh, likely that I'm going to be able to capture both of these offices. He's got no adequate way of defending them. So, um, so here uh, my opponent played a4 and now his uh, his pawn is going to be running down. He's got a threat here of coming to a5, um, which would really um, uh, tear away uh, my pawn structure. If I played a move like king f8, so getting the king off this exposed diagonal, this is um, already leading to equality as after a5, uh, a really nice pawn sacrifice because now um, I kind of have to play the move b5. If I capture here, this uh, gives easy equality for white. He's going to get to a1 and he's going to pick up some of these pawns along the way and should do absolutely fine. There'll probably be some sort of 4-4 four to four pawn endgame with the rooks, which should be easy to draw um, as both nearly all the pawns are in the same same area. So um, going back to the position then, so that wasn't played. Um, what I should have done here, and you can see by the arrows, I should have come to a2 and then picked up this pawn because of that potential threat. Um, but instead I played the wrong, uh, wrong uh, attacked the wrong pawn. I, I decided to go after the c, uh, c, f, c pawn instead. And, uh, and now a5 could have been played and this would have been a really good move. It would have easily gotten back in the game and it would have been total quality. But instead he goes for rook to d1 which is equally as good too. And now how do I react to this threat? What I really should have done is play the move uh, rook to f8. So after this, if he does decide to throw in the check, I would have been absolutely fine. I would have come here and um, okay, he's going to pick up this pawn, but I'm doing okay. I can get my king to a nice safe square on e6. So uh, this would have been absolutely fine. Um, but in um, uh, if I were well, after this, if he came to d7 instead, just going straight. Oops, just going straight after the pawn. Um, here I would have just taken my own pawn. Okay, it's not the end of the world. I've got a pawn for a pawn. And uh, potentially I can create a target on this uh, to get this extra pawn. And this is a nice little little ending. Um, although it's totally equal, um, there's a nice imbalance here where we've got these two passers and uh, White has got this one passer and uh, you know potentially another passer here. But he's also got the extra pawn as well, um, which would have been quite an interesting position to play. 
in any case, um, I, I played a bit, a bit of a mistake here after uh, rook to d1. I played the move h6, which is just a terrible move. Um, it really allows white to come in now with this nasty check after king to h6. He now goes after these two pawns. You can see here now, um, I've got to defend one of them, so I lose another tempo trying to defend the uh, f6 pawn. Um, he captures here, I capture back, and um, this is this is just a pretty, uh, it's not a great looking endgame. Now my king can come under some easy threat here. Um, I decided to try and take off this uh, A pawn now and put a bit of pressure on it. Um, but now you can see here by the arrows, white had uh, this potential G4 move. And I was really worried about it coming to this square and start uh, pushing forward and uh, delivering some punishment. So... Um, I'll give you a sort of example line here. Uh, if let's say um, rook to c2, if I yeah, if I played if I if I played for that, let's say oh no, sorry, if I go back a second, um, so rook to a3, which is what I did play, and let's say g4 immediately. Um, now white is going to have a really easy time here. Um, he's going to um, be thinking about sort of taking off, uh, start attacking this king. I could take here, which would look pretty good, and that's probably why he didn't play it. But after this move, I'm now actually threatening a uh, a really dangerous uh, mating threat here. Oh, well, not really mating threat, but a um, you know potential problems with this passed pawn. So rook to a3 as an example. I throw in the check. If I play the move f6. Um, I think actually this is quite adequate. This should do okay, but it looks like actually I've got some counterplay with the rook coming down here, so it should be all right. Um, but rook to a6 now defending the pawn. So spending that move just to do that. And um, yeah, I, I'm not. I wasn't too comfortable having to play this position. I would think I would have um, probably been close to resigning at this point. So instead of that, I uh, he played the move um, rook a6, and that allowed me a little bit of safety as I can now jump my king into f5. He ran back with rook to a7, so just kind of wasting a move here, and I was very happy with this. I just took off these two pawns. Those were really his two biggest threats, and I've taken them off the game. So after a few more captures, um, he goes after my last pawn, and it looks as though he's going to get... Um, total equality as although we've got two pawns on different sides this should still be uh, still be fine I'm assuming as he can get this pawn um, but here I played a really nice move I threw in the check here and after king come forward and then played uh, rook to f6 and now uh, my extra pawn is defended um, and really here you can see by the arrows white should have really come down to g8 maybe do some stuff along here and start harassing some of these pawns and then just hope hope he can hold this position um, it is possible to hold if, if the a couple of pawns do come off if let's say both both sets of pawns come off um, with only the one pawn white can hold um, but it's very difficult as we've got two passes here um, and they're not on the same side so it would be it will be quite interesting um, if uh, if it did if the game did continue from here, but it's showing that I'm I should be winning this um, by uh, you know a significant margin. In any case, my opponent captured here, and this was just a dreadful move, as now this is a totally winning um, pawn and king end game. Um, just so you can see why it's winning, uh, the game continued g4, and now my king came up here, and I've just got a simple plan here. I'm just going to take off these pawns. And then I can push these pawns. If uh, there's too there's there's too many problems for for the white king to try and hold on to. If he tries to come over here to protect this pawn like this, I then just push the other pawns forward, and this king can't be in two places at once. So uh, this is losing. If he tries to come back over, I capture these off. And although he's about to get these two pawns, I've got this this passer now. That is going to uh, go up to the end of the board now. So, um, and the similar way for the other side, if uh, if instead of that he came over this way to try and hit my other pawns, um, I'm absolutely happy with this as I can uh, take off everything. And again, I'm going to get this passer this way 
and uh, win in the Queen and King in game. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've managed to get to the end, uh, congratulations. If you can put in the comments below um, uh, Rook endings. But otherwise, guys, uh, have a great day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.